Installation and verification of Siemens Claremont Atrosomy flow measurement to measure the flow rate of fluid inside a pipe. For my introduction, welcome to the world of Claremont Atrosomy flow measurement where innovation needs precision and industry leaders embrace a non intrusive forward thinking approach to fluid flow monitoring. Embrace this transformative technology as we embark on a journey to harness the power of ultrasonic waves for a more sustainable and productive future. In this exploration, we will discover how claim on ultrasonic flow measurement empowers industries to streamline impression, optimize resource utilization, and improve overall efficiency while, while maintaining the integrity of existing pipelines and minimizing disruptions. Moreover, we will dive into the technical aspects, highlighting its robustness in various flow conditions and its ability to handle a wide range of pipe materials and sizes. For my project background, Flamon ultrasonic flow measurement is a tool for measuring fluid flow rates in water, sewerage, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technologies. It is ideal for leakage monitoring and centrifugal farm performance testing, influenced by heat and flow rate, fluid properties, better design, and motor speed. Claremont ultrasonic flow measurement uses multi pass transit using two wide beam ultrasonic sensors for liquid flow analysis. Accurate digital signal processing measure arrival time for upstream and downstream direction. For multi pass using Two white beam. As you can see, we have, for example, pipe with an ultrasonic M1. For this one, I'm using a reflective mode. Press the sensor will send a pulse and then reflected by the power pipe and then return to the downstream sensor. And this is the first one is up stream sensor. While this will be the flow rate. And here is where the water comes, for example, a pump. And then you can see the last one is Plan 1 ultrasonic flow measurement involves designing, developing, and testing of flow measurement system for accurately measuring water, sewerage, or fluid flow in a single pipe. This involves selecting appropriate sensor size, transmitter, and calculating pipe diameter and length. For the first one, I already introduced a reflective mode. Now we have. We have a direct mode. For direct mode, we place the sensor on top of the pipe, and as usual, this is up, while the downstream will be at the bottom of the pipe. The way the direct mode the name suggests the sensor forces will go directly across the pipe. While the first one will be reflected by the pipe. By the flow and pump will be the same.
go to the problem statement. Accurate trustworthy plan on ultrasonic flow measurement is crucial for industrial, agricultural, and environmental applications. As a traditional methods can be costly and insufficient for certain applications. When one ultrasonic flow measurement is an alternative flow rate measurement, but should be avoided on vertical pipes free of coatings and at high points to ensure accurate measurements and avoid errors. The, set the statement here, we must avoid the bond vertical pipe is because when vertical pipes, the flow will be pulled down by the gravity. And let's say we place the climb on sensor here. It will measure, still can measure the flow rate, but the measurements will be not matching with other types because the flow will try to go down faster than it's supposed to be. If you want to measure, we have to make sure that we place the climb on far away from vertical vertical pipe. Let's say we place it over here, then we can measure it properly. And the last one will be a precise and correct plan on ultrasonic flow measurement system is needed for monitoring flow rates, addressing external influences, and improving water resource management, industrial process optimization, and environmental monitoring. From my project objective, we have to create a climb on ultrasonic flow measurement system with sensor and a flow meter to measure flow rate, prevent production stop, and require minimum maintenance. You can see that we can prevent production stop. For example, we have a paper factory. For them, uh, with a lot of water usage, for just a single piece of paper, they consume a lot of water. Imagine that without Clement technology, they have to cut the pipe and stop the production on the factory, and they will lose a lot of production. Let's say at one hour, they can produce about 500, 500 of paper. Then if you have to cut down the pipe, just, uh, just because we want to install, let's say, electromagnetic flow meter. Then after the installation complete, then the factory will continue to produce their uh, production. But with Clement technology, we just install the Clement and then without cutting or and stop any production, they can still run the factory without any interruptions. Then we formulate calculate sensor selection and mounting technique for accurate flow rate measurement pipes. Depends on certain conditions, we must calculate sensor selection. For example, if the pipe diameter is too big, then the sensor must be the same calculation as the pipe. We cannot use a small sensor on a big pipe, for example. And then mounting technique also play an important role because we have one or two ways to mount the sensor or transducer to the pipe. The first one will be we will mount the sensor using a clamp on. The second one we will mount the sensor using a magnetic mount frame, which I will show at the next slide. Then we will validate clamp on ultrasonic flow measurement system accuracy and reliability under various conditions. So perform field tests to confirm Clam 1 ultrasonic flow measurement accuracy. Clam 1 ultrasonic flow measurement system cell cost effectiveness, accuracy, and dependability compared to other methods. The project aims to create affordable flow rate measurement system for various applications, improving water resource management and industrial process effectiveness. While for project scope, the first one, ultrasonic flow meter system criteria for flow accuracy duration time. We select appropriate sensors, size, and hardware for Clement ultrasonic flow measurement system. 
assessing climb on ultrasonic flow measurement, affordability, precision, and dependability. Project scope include installation, maintenance, calibration, documentation, training, and end user support for climb on ultrasonic flow measurement device. This project aims to create a practical, affordable climb on ultrasonic flow measurement system for water, wastewater, and industrial, agricultural, and environmental settings. We will install this claim on ultrasonic flow measurement with Pemerusan Ais Lango in Sepang, Sangu. Let's go to the technical review. Claim on ultrasonic flow measurement is a non-invasive, cost-effective, and easy-to-install technique for measuring liquid flow rates in pipes without cutting or altering pipe structure. The first one is Measurement is a non-invasive. Non-invasive means we don't have to use any hardware or cutting tools to cut down a pipe. We just place the clamp on on the outside without touching the media or, or so on, and so on. And the second one, principle of operation, including the clamp on of ultrasonic flow measurement technique, uses pairs of transducer on a pipe, like this one. We use two sensors only with one transmitting. This one we call upstream, and the other receiving ultrasonic. This one, the upstream forces. The difference in transit time is directly proportional to the liquid flow rate. When the faster the flow, flow, then the signal will be farther, so it will return to the upstream. If the liquid flows slowly, then the down, the down sensor will receive the signal from up. Upstream will be much faster. Environmental conditions such as temperature, humidity, and dust affect flow measurement accuracy. On the wall where we place the sensor or transducer, we must make sure that the wall has been fully cleaned from any contaminant such as dust, soil, or any other contaminant. And the last one is conclusion. Clam on ultrasonic flow measurement is a widely used non invasive method for determining liquid flow rates in pipes. It requires careful consideration of factors like pipe material, flow profile, transducer positioning, and calibration for reliable and precise measurements. Regular maintenance is crucial for long term accuracy. For methodology, Clam on ultrasonic flow measurement is a non invasive technique for measuring liquid flow rates in pipes without cutting or interrupting flow, involving key steps for accurate and reliable measurement, such as flow measurement system selection. This one, if we want to measure the flow rate, we must select this, which system that we want to use. So, the system that is suitable in this case. For example, the customer wants to measure it for a long time. Then we have suggest them to use a permanent flow meter. So just in case they want to measure it for a short time, then we can suggest it to use a portable ultrasonic flow meter. The second one, transducer installation. Like I mentioned, we have reflective mode, direct mode, and others. Coupling medium verification, initial calibration, Signal quality verification. Every time we install the clamp one, we can measure the signal quality by selecting a difference or entering a service menu. Then the transmitter will show us the signal, whether it's good or poor. And then we have zero flow measurement. Before we start the measuring, we can test the flow rate at a zero flow rate. And then we can measure it and identify that there is a crack one or false one. And then we have flow measurement procedure, signal processing and data analysis, data validation and quality check, maintenance and regular checks. Go to the expected result. For climb on ultrasonic flow measurement result depends on system quality, flow characteristic, pipe size, material and calibration accuracy. Properly installed and calibrated expected outcomes are non-invasiveness, like 
we don't have to cut down the part. And then the accuracy, which is the flow measurement must be plus minus uh, less than 2% error. And then we go to the repeatability. We can measure it everywhere or whenever we want for the customer. And then the last one will be range of flow rates. We can measure up to 1000 meter cubic per hour. And we can go above by simply adjusting the settings inside the parameter. But the last one will be summary. Climb one ultrasonic flow measurement provides a reliable and non evasive way to determine flow rates in pipes for a wide range of liquids. With proper installation, calibration, and maintenance, you can expect accurate and consistent flow rate measurements for your specific application. Okay. Here we have a uh, actual picture from the Nurusan Aislango in Sepang. And this one we will be using a direct mode. So uh, first one I will present and we talk about the portable transmitter. Up here, we place it on the stairs. And then there's a two cable laying on top of the pipe. We go to the first trans user which we call it upstream sensor. And the second sensor will be downstream sensor here. And the flow of direction will go up. That means the pump will be at the bottom here. And then the flow of the water will go up until it reach the water tank up. So this is will be the direct mode. For portable transmitter, we can measure it by the current time, flow cubic meter power. Uh, this reading is in real time. If you want to calculate it from hour to minute to hour to second, we just multiply it by 1000. For example, we take 624.0, multiply by 1000, we get 634,000. That means in just a second, the pipe already transfers 624 liters per second. On the small one here on the right, we have a totalizer, which is measured by cubic meter. And for example, this one already 3,826. And bottom here, we have a simple graph that relies on the flow in cubic meter per hour. And in case the flow is high, and then the graph will go up. And if the flow rate cubic meter per hour is low, then the graph will be down. And you can see here, it starts from zero. And then we already adjust it to reach the customer demands. It reached until 1000 kb meter. So, not to VDS. That's up to on path to get on Yes, ALC, A, Alder, you know what we are marked out and you tell me that they are probably in the manual. Okay. 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 The sensor on the wall of the pipe, just in case the pipe is blocked. So we cannot lay any chain or clamp around the pipe. In this picture, I will only show the pipe is lower to the ground. So we don't have space to put out the chain and wrap it around the pipe. And in other case, the pipe is within a wall. So we also cannot wrap the chain and cannot tie. So we just use this magnetic frame and just place it and let the magnet attach the transducer to the wall pipe. The next one is liquid sensor selection and sizing tool. 
here we can use the resumes to calculate a specific amount of selections for the sensor, which is suitable. We just have to adjust the unit length here, which is in millimeter for temperature in degree Celsius. And then we go to the velocity in meters per second. And then volume slash mass in cubic meters. And the time will be in hour. And then the pi data is also very crucial. We have to select it whether the pipe is made up from steel or titanium and so on. And then we have outside diameter, which is this time we set it to 50. We can refer it by using uh, any JKR spreadsheet or spine spreadsheet, and then we can get the specific data. For wall thickness, we just use the wall thickness gauge from any hardware store. We can measure how thick the wall of the pipe. In this case, the thickness will be five millimeter. And then you go outside diameter, lima puluh unit apa? Lima puluh mm, lima puluh cm. Tadi itu pipe. Yang tadi itu gambar itu pipe lima puluh mm. Oh bukan. Jom. Lima ini lima puluh yang apa tu? Ini reading yang pipe ada di kapal. Bukan tadi punya sampel lah. No, bukan sampel. So, masa tu tak guna software ni. Ni just kita bagi nampak lah. Okay. And then, after we insert all the required data, and if we press the calculation, the software will auto calculate and show us which type of sensor that we use. In this case, it will tell us to use a universal. And then V3 is the size of the sensor. And it will test, it also will tell us how to use mount, mounting type. In this one, it shows reflect. And the last one, normally I will use is the LTN 36.048 millimeter. That means the uh, range between downstream and upstream sensor will be 36 millimeter far. Normally, I will convert it to centimeter, which I will multiply by 10, so I will get 3.6 centimeter. That will be easier for me to get the range between each sensor. Six, six, and then other bubble mm, Around 36 mm. MM 3.6. Ah. Ah. Three centimeter. Ah. Oh, okay. So that's the sensor that we use. Okay. And then we just have to calculate the sensitivity. Oh, that is the data. 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 That is for the specificities graph screen, this is the output which is software will measure the signal from the upstream and downstream sensor. If you look closely, this graph actually have double lines. And the first one will be upstream, which is in blue color. And the second one, one is downstream, 
which is be the red one. If they cross each other like this, so that means the graph or the signal is very strong or good. But if the upstream or downstream didn't pair or match each other, that's simple. Bagus punya macam mana dia bentuk? Rasanya tak bagus punya. for data logger, every time and sometimes when we do the claim on ultrasonic flow measurement, they or others company we plot a uh, power quality and energy analyzer to the power that which turns through the pump and then we can compare the data here during we calculate the flow measurement this is what a near data output any data to data log so every they, time they capture data uh, they capture for the capture to the light on the level to the more to voltage so for the compare okay the data kita punya ah kita punya for the same my ini ni apa kaitan ni kaitan to comparison you macam mana compare sama kita punya Compare kita pada kasi itu voltage kasi dia lebih mana? Oh tadi tadi. Ah, so macam mana dia mau compare? Compare dia akan run satu logger. Every time we take the measurement, contoh macam 600 meter cubic, then ah dia akan record. So ini ini saya record ini voltage dua. Ah, ini berapa volt dua? Ah, lebih fluorin. Nah, dia berapa voltage dua? Macam mana mau compare? Compare tentu kalau dia 0.21 let's say kita punya flow masa tu 600 mm. and then suddenly it drops from 0.21 to 0.919 and let's say the flow rate at that time will be dropped let's say for 100 meter cubic drop and then for the third longer so we say so the measurement of flow rate will be the same. It's this one. Separate the guy. 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 Kita kamera full meter you detect lain punya flow dia kalau lain punya voltage mana you share? Sebab masa tu kita alias dengan dia, so every time satu side. Um, ini dekat dekat pucuk dekat sini saja berbelas sini saja. Baik selalu dia seluruh di seluruh kita. Uh, tally kan reading tu dengan data logger tu every time kita ambil reading for let's say every one minute ini sama dia ni ini ialah voltage kan nah betul kita biar full dan nah nah kita biar full ni okey dia ah ais tanggo dia orang dia dah sample lah sample tak ada sebab data logger ni uh, dia punya spreadsheet dia saja yang pegang then macam kita lah kita provide result dekat Islamo dia pun akan provide result dekat Islamo juga. Baik pandu ni. Okay. Oh final be random. At the heart of this innovation lies the power of ultrasonic technology. Using ultrasonic waves emitted by sensor to emit on to the pipes external surface. This method accurately measures the velocity of the flowing flowing within. The sensors detect changes in the time it takes for ultrasonic signals to travel upstream and downstream, enabling precise calculations of flow rates. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the chain 
that we use to wrap around the pipe. So we, we can see here we have the clearance for the chain to move around. So the complete chain will be like this. Then we just type using the map over the top of the Hmm, tak ada kasih satu example yang buat ni kerja. Example, kita ni tu. Itu tak ada cakap ni biar result pass ke field ni. Dia expectation ni apa? Dia first inquiry ni apa? First kain keluar itu pia wah sini kita buat kena mana? Kena tu nak buat yang kena. Oh. So lepas buat lah, pass ke field ke? Atau macam mana ke? Result ke comparison ni, semua pun dah. Kita punya result pas ke sini. Nah itu sebab masa tu Islam tu pun orang just bukan data terus saja. Masa kita yang data tu, kau tak ada lagi lah. Maksudnya every every reading tu, every reading tu kita ambil. Ini data berapa lama itu dia? Lama lah, tapi ada tak lah. Include ke dalam slide, saya cuma include satu rule tadi itu je untuk present. Tapi saya ada banyak lah reading. Every one minutes. Berapa sub yang pernah pergi? Boy, you can want. Satu tak ada ya? Kita nak buat tak ada. Lebih, lebih dari satu. Yang lain dia yang jawab semua ini macam ni atau semua, semua dia punya application lain? Hmm, lain lagi. Ada yang pakai magnetic. Ada yang pakai chain, ada yang pakai clamp on. Bukan saja dia berdemen objektif lah. Dia nak sewa ini clamp on dia objektif dia lah ber. Dia nak check dia ber pump ke, dia nak kira air bilang ke, atau dia nak buat apa? Dia nak ada kenapa dia nak sewa ini punya? Ada. Contoh macam portable, orang perlukan data untuk monitor pump performance dengan quality. Kalau berapa lama dia monitor, you can ask you satu example mana nanti. Boleh, boleh. Contoh macam every pipe. Every pipe, sometimes you ada speed into three main pipe. Sebab pipe tu dah di pump. So, they are running three pump. So, I just masukkan lah. Pipe one, pipe two, pipe three. And then, kalau customer request for permanent transmitter, this one. Yeah, look, we provide so they can bill to the contractor that use the water. So actually, you permanent sama tak permanent beli apa berasa? Kalau permanent punya, you boleh dia dekat site tu berapa lah hari lah. Sebab dia relies on battery power. Customer boleh access. Kalau tak permanent ni? Kalau tak permanen punya, dia tak ada standard power source. It depends on internal battery saja. Ya, tambah satu power source kasi dia. Kalau tambah, kalau tambah satu power source, sila jadi permanen lah. Ya, tak ada lah. Jadi sebab kalau portable punya, dia punya benefit dia dia IP67. Dia boleh kena hujan, tapi kalau transmitter dia tak boleh kena air. Dia bukan splash proof. Dia kena sit dekat confined space. Macam dalam pedestal panel, dalam box. Itu saya. Itu semua. Jadi, awak pada awak punya, awak kena, awak kena buat satu extra punya tender kan? Ha, cuba sebut dia, betul-betul. Actual punya result, result. Yeah, actual punya, you can just cari satu actual punya case untuk study ya. So, sampai sekarang, you tak pernah study satu actual punya case lah. Dari zero until n punya result comparison, you know, tak pernah study. Kalau comparison, yang macam tadi tu lah. Sebab yang tu, memang itu tak ada comparison. Oh. So langsung tak boleh compare satu watches tu pol bang, so you boleh pol dia enam ratus lebih. Macam mana compare? Macam mana tadi enam ratus sama one pol something. Macam mana compare? Compare apa? Sebab dia masa tu pun kita monitor 
bumpy performance. Yeah, so but lion, lion application. Sometimes they are not, they are not collect it all within three days. They have totalized the year. They have found during the year. Tapi after compilation, yeah. Tapi masa tu memang ada lah jumpa ABB punya flow meter. Okay. So I just measure macam compare. ตัวเนี้ยก็สมมุติว่าอ่าเป็นคอมเพนในการดิฟูเนี่ยแต่พี่อ่ะไอ้ตัดใช่ไหมอ่ะเดี๋ยวว่าสิบสามมาซะตั
Tak apa lagi? Janganlah. Tapi um, nanti saya sambung ni lah. Nanti saya boleh scan ni. So, I, I can stay free. KZ dah habis dah? Uh, so, dia tadi, dah habis. Uh, so, tadi betul lah apa cakap Jonas tadi. So, ambil satu actual project. So, you boleh you involve awal-awal sampai akhir, ambil data yang betul. Uh -huh. Oh, cantik nampak you punya report tu. So, Jonas cakap uh. tadi tak ambil, uh, ambil satu case study. Kan, uh. so, involve daripada awal tu ambil data dia. So, you boleh comp yang dia senang you nampak comparison. Kalau you just, you just ambil sample Uh, ni sampel daripada uh, site ni, ni sampel besar ni dah nampak macam uh, cantik report. So report you nanti ambil satu projek, ambil satu actual data. Daripada awal sampai akhir baru dah nampak kesinambungan every each chapter tu. Mm. Ya? Yeah? Mm. Uh, baru nampak report you best lah. Nampak cantik. Orang boleh, orang, orang kita boleh faham sebab dia ada dia punya synchronize lah you punya each chapter. Tak nak macam tiba-tiba Chapter ni data lain, chapter lain, data lain. Ah, tu hmm, kita yeah, pakai jadi pening. Okay. Ah, so Satu itu yang jadi yang jadi advice tadi. Okay, tapi overall ah uh, best ah uh, mana puasi juga lah better than belum ni. Dulu hari tu tak, tak nampak apa kan? <laughs> Now dah nampak lah apa projek you kan? Ah, uh, so hmm. Jonah, you have any comment? Uh, tak ada lah. Nampak itu case study saja lah. Ah, kan? Case study kan? Case study. Nampak macam tiba-tiba data ni tiba-tiba data lain kan? Nampak tak cantik? Ya, yeah, kita nanti, langsung kan? lain lah. Tak tahu dia malah kan mana yang itu. Satu je lah buat test, satu je full kan? Tak ada kaitan lah. <laughs> ah, sebab dia tak ada kaitan tu je buat benda kena ambil data actual baru nampak best. Sama nampak projek. Hmm, tapi overall projek ni okey lah. Uh, cuma you kena improve yang apa Jonas nak advise tadi. Okay, untuk FYP2 maknanya sekarang improve on report je lah ambil data. Yang lain semua maksud dia punya dia punya uh, metodologi semua start semua dah okey lah Jonas. Hmm, kan? Nah, uh, so sekarang data je. Ambil data je. Pergi site betul-betul ambil data. Daripada awal sampai akhir dan boleh buat comparison kat last ujung-ujung tu. Hmm, okay. Kan? buat analisis, tambah-tambah analisis. Eh? Hmm. Hmm. So okey lah, benda tak nak lah. Ambil masa lama sangat. Okay. Yeah, tak so, Jonas, thank you very much eh. Jonas nanti oh, you, you. Uh, apa tu, jangan lupa sign eh. Sign and chop. Hmm. Lepas tu minta miskin tu, uh, ni dah scan lah. Scan kasi you lah. Ah, scan kasi I. Okay. okay. Thank you tau hmm. Jonas for your time. Okay. Thank, thank you to Jonas tau. Dapat sign yeah. and chop. Thank you Jonas. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye.